What's going on, everybody? Thanks for tuning back in. Today, we're going to be taking a look at data validation, much like we did last week. We're going to be taking a look at a library called YUP, Y-U-P. It's an alternative to JOY, the data validation NPM package we looked at last week. It works in a very similar way. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use it to protect routes in your API. You can see in the package JSON file here, I'm using Express and Yup, and these are the versions. You can use any versions you want, just make sure that they're compatible. As you can see here in this controller, this is the only route that actually works inside of this basic API I have set up for you. It just basically returns the body that you send to the post request. So whatever you send inside of your package, it's going to just return that to you, nice and simple. What we're gonna do is first, I'm gonna show you how this works. And then I'm going to show you how to protect the route with Yup's data validation. In my terminal here, I'm going to go ahead and run Nodemon. And then I'm going to use a tool called Postman. And I'm going to send a basic request to this post route that I've created. So you can see here, I'm going to hit send. And everything that I sent is just returned to me in this data variable. So the route's working just fine, as you can see it on the screen here. So now let's go ahead and create a middleware folder and create our Yup middleware create a file called yup.ts. I'm gonna copy and paste my controller and its imports from my controllers file so I can just reuse them. And after I paste it into my middleware file here, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the function starting at the brackets and then save it for later. Go ahead, erase everything and create an export const and we're gonna call this validate yup. It's gonna be our function. It's gonna take in one parameter. The parameter is gonna be called schema and it's gonna be of type any object schema. We're gonna import this in a minute. Make this function, return an async function and then go ahead and paste in what you copied out before and just erase what's in the body of the async function. Go ahead and at the top, import your any object schema from yup. Now at the bottom of this file, go ahead and create a const variable called schemas and make sure to export it. This object is going to hold all of your validation items. Create one called data and it's going to be of type object. You're going to go ahead and import that from yup. You're going to use the dot operator and call shape. And inside of shape is going to be an object where you define your keys. So first let's create a name. This name is going to be a string that you're also going to import from Yup. You're going to add the dot required, which means that we have to have it. And that's all we need for the name. Go ahead and create an age, import number from Yup, and do the same thing we just did before, also ensuring that it's a positive integer. You can see this is very similar to the Joy program we did last week. Continuing with our example from the website, we're going to use an email that's a string of type email. And then we're going to also add a website that is a string of type URL. Now you can actually insert some data as well. Go ahead and create a created on, make it a date type from Yup. Give it a default value of a new date. What this is going to do is going to validate the schema that you pass in, and it's going to add this created on object for you. Now inside of your validate yup function, add a try catch block. Inside of the try, we're gonna have our const data is equal to await, and we're gonna call schema.validate. We're gonna pass in our request.body because that's where our information is going to be coming from. Now, if this works, it'll stay inside the try block. What you can do is you can go ahead and log this data if you'd like and then call the next function from express so that it passes through the middleware. Inside of the catch block, what you can do is you can log your error and then you can return a response with the status of 422 and just pass in the error as the object. This is all we need for this file for now. So let's move over to the routes file and we're gonna actually inject our middleware into the call. After the forward slash inside of your post function, go ahead and call your validate yup, and you should be able to import it easily with Visual Studio Code, and pass in your schemas.data. Make sure to add the comma, and now this route is protected by your middleware. 
So if we go back to Postman right now and hit send, it should be validated and work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna send it and then we're gonna play around with it to make sure that our conditions are being met. So I hit send, you can see everything works fine. So let's change the age from an integer to a string and see what happens. You can see that there's a validation error because this is not a number, it's a string. You could do the same thing by getting rid of the extension on the email, just change the number back so it passes it and we should get an error with the email. And just like that, our route is protected. Now you may have noticed that the created on date isn't showing up. Our object is valid because we're passing in the correct information, but the date's not showing up. And that's because we don't actually take that value. So let's go back to our middleware function and see what we have to do here. Inside of the middleware function, we're creating this data object, but we're not actually passing it anywhere. So an easy way to save an object in middleware and passing it to the next function is using something called the response.locals. So what we're gonna do is after you log the data here, you can call your response or res object dot locals, create an object called dot data and make that equal to our data. Now we can access this data from any further function down the middleware chain. So go to your controllers and what we can do is inside of this response, we can add a locals variable and simply call our response dot locals dot data. And this should show up with our date. So let's save our changes and go back to postman, hit send. And you'll see that we have the two different objects exactly the same, but our locals has the created on passed into it. Nice and simple. Finally, since we're using TypeScript, what we could do is we can make a new folder called interfaces and we can define the object that we want just so we can access the types if we need to do anything with that variable before we return it. So go ahead and create your interfaces folder, create a yup.ts file, and you're gonna export an interface, call it iupdata, and it's gonna have five keys on it. What it's gonna have, it's gonna have a name that's of type string, an age of type number, an email of type string, make sure to add the question mark because it's not required. Same thing with the website, a question mark and the string, and then create it on with a date. Create it on is not optional, but it's always created for us, so this will always pass. Once you've done this, you can go back to your controllers and you can define this data object as your response.locals.data, call it as your IEUP data. And now you know for sure that this data will always be here if we make it to the sample route because it's being protected this way from the YUP package. You can go ahead and just change your locals to the data object inside of your response. Go back to Postman and test it one more time and just make sure everything's working properly. And just like that, as the YUP package describes it, this is dead simple object validation. You don't really have to do anything fancy here. The Yup documentation has all the information you're going to need. It's as simple as I have just shown you. Thanks for tuning back in guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. Until then, we'll see you in the next video.